One of the most amazing things about the Wizarding World is the incredible amount of spells that JK Rowling has created to go with it. There are spells for everything, for the simplest things, for the most difficult things. There are spells to hurt people, there are spells to hurt a lot of people. And then there are spells that are a result of rare manifestations of magic. Out of the many spells known to the Wizarding World and us readers, I've chosen two that really appeal to me for several reasons. The first is the reverse spell effect, better known as Priori Incantatum, a resulting manifestation of colliding wands. The second spell I've chosen is Fiendfire, a powerful feat of dark pyro magic with devastating results. In today's video, I'm going to be explaining in detail each spell to give you, my audience, a better understanding of just how different they are to each other, but at the same time still mesmerizing in their own manner. So I'll begin with the reverse spell effect, followed by Fiendfire. Welcome back to the world of Harry Potter, please enjoy today's video. Okay guys, so this reverse spell has two kinds of forms. We have the reverse spell, the main spell, Prior Incantato, which is a charm that forces a wand to show an echo of the last spell it has performed. Its counter charm is the eradication spell, which removes these images. Then we have the reverse spell effect, otherwise known as Priori Incantatum, which is an especially rare manifestation that occurs when two wands with the same core, that is, taken from the same animal, attempt to duel each other. So we'll begin with that one first. The winner's wand forces the loser's wand to produce echoes of the most recent spells performed in reverse order. As dictated by the subtle laws of wands, when a duel occurs between wizards with wand cores harvested from the same creature, Simultaneous spell casting by both parties triggers a rare, powerful effect called Priori Incantatum. Both wands became linked through a single golden thread. Hundreds of smaller golden beams then shoot off from this central thread to form a cage around the jewelers. The two wand holders are then forced to compete in a battle of wills by forcing golden beads of light to move along through the beam back towards their opponent. When one wand manages to overcome the other, it forces the losing wand to regurgitate echoes of the most recent spells it had cast, in reverse order. If one of these spells was the killing curse, then a ghostly echo of the murdered person could emerge from the killer's wand. Such echoes retained the appearance and character of the deceased person. They were able to hold conversations and could remember the events leading up to and following their deaths. However, these echoes were not ghosts, nor were they considered to be returning the deceased person from the dead. Indeed, they could only linger on the mortal plane for a few moments before they faded back into the beyond. Now, the reverse spell is slightly different as I mentioned at the beginning. This spell is not a manifestation as a result of twin wand cores. It's actually a spell that allows you to see what the caster's wand has last produced. The best example of the reverse spell was when Amos Diggory cast it on Harry Potter's wand in the aftermath of the Death Eater attack at the 1994 Quidditch World Cup in order to determine whether Harry conjured the dark mark over the campsite. You most likely are all aware that the best example of the reverse spell effect, or priori incantatum, was when Lord Voldemort was resurrected by Peter Pettigrew using the blood of Harry Potter in the Little Hangleton graveyard in 1995. A duel ensued between Voldemort and Harry, during which their wands, which both contained feathers from the Phoenix Fox, became connected, triggering priori incantatum. Voldemort's wand was ultimately overcome by Harry's, causing it to release shadows of people he had murdered with it. Cedric Diggory, Frank Bryce, Bertha Jorkins, as well as Lily and James Potter. So to conclude, 
one spell can actually be cast while the other cannot. Fiendfire, of which the incantation is unknown, was a curse that produced enchanted flames of immense size and heat that were capable of destroying nearly anything in its path, taking the form of gigantic fiery beasts that seek out living targets. The curse was advanced dark magic and it was one of the few known substances capable of destroying horcruxes. Fiendfire was conjured by Vincent Crabbe during the Battle of Hogwarts in the Room of Requirement. Fiendfire was an immensely powerful fire that cannot be extinguished by normal or even enchanted water. It was also very difficult for the caster to control, flowing from their wand in a continuous stream of flame. If the caster flicks their wand when the stream of flame was still running from it, a jet of fire would shoot off and become a flaming animal. When cast, the fire appears with a roaring, billowing noise and gave its victims only a split second's warning to escape, quickly consuming anything in the vicinity of its caster. The flames were of an abnormally large size and take the shape of fiery monsters and beasts. As I mentioned, snakes, dragons, eagles, chimeras, all kinds of serpents, constantly mutating into other beasts as well as powerful, formless flames that destroy all things flammable around itself. The fire even possessed a sentience of its own, a continuous, though far from latent, desire to burn anything it could. It would pursue any nearby life forms and anything that it could destroy and was capable of incinerating anything through mere contact. As Fiendfire was inherently extremely dangerous, most casters would normally have major difficulty with controlling the fire once it had been unleashed. There was also a charm to cease the flames, but unfortunately, Vincent Crabbe never paid attention in class long enough to learn them, therefore costing him his life. Now, if you're wondering why that kind of dangerous spell will be taught, it's because Amicus Carroll was teaching Defense Against the Dark Arts, or simply Dark Arts, at the time. Casters with greater skill had an easier time controlling the flames, such as Lord Voldemort for example. It was unknown if the fire was able to burn off on its own. Fiendfire was one of the few substances known to be able to destroy a horcrux. Hermione Granger was aware of this, but never considered the use of it against Voldemort's horcruxes due to the inherently dangerous, uncontrollable nature of the spell. So everyone, there you have it, two of my absolute favourite spells, spells I find really interesting due to the nature behind them. Now here's something interesting even more, I literally only discovered myself while researching this video that Priori Incantatum was a manifestation of the original Prior Incantato, the original reverse spell, so even Harry Potter folklore, even me, I learn something new every day. But let's make things more interesting, let's spice things up in the comment section. So guys, it's no secret, I would love to know, and I'm sure you would all love to know, the true incantation for Fiendfire, but it doesn't exist, it's not being created. When Crab performed it, we, we, never, we weren't there when he cast the spell. Nobody knows if he cast it non-verbally or if he cast it verbally. When Voldemort cast it, it was non-verbal as well. So let's have a little competition. I want you guys to make up an incantation for Fiendfire. Make one up, be clever about it as well. The best comment gets pinned, will get a heart and a reply from me. So guys, let's see how creative you all are. Thanks again everyone, have a great day and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at Potter Folklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. 
Thanks again, everyone, and please have a great day.